Nashless and Derry fight running battles with the police in August 1969 in what became known as the Battle of the Bogside. Flames engulfed Catholic homes in Belfast, Bombay Street. Across the city, it was the same story. Mayhem. For Catholic Bishop William Philbin, there was one solution. The people are asking me, for God's sake, all over the place, are, are the troops coming in? They're dying for them. They have confidence in the troops. Soldiers soon arrived in their thousands. The small peacetime garrison was reinforced with troops from British Army bases all over the world. On the 14th of August, troops were sent into the Bogside. The next day, they marched on to the Falls Road and other parts of Belfast. Jack Daw and his platoon commander, Mike Jelf, were among the first to arrive. It was, a, to all intents and our first experience of a war zone. Uh, it was full of rubbish, it was full of burning, and I think it's a smell that will stay with me the rest of my life, is that burning, rubbery smell. The um, shock of seeing the um, state of the street, uh, the absence of the people, the smoke and the smell, yeah. and we were, yeah. we were really quite worried. It wasn't long before the... Uh, uh, the tea and cakes and sandwiches, um, soda breads and all those other things which made us fat um, were produced. No thanks, we don't. Almost to the point. Sorry, sorry man, I'm fat enough. Almost like that. But the honeymoon period didn't last long. The obscenities and everything that they use to the people and the talk of them. There are some good ones, I'll admit, among them, but there are very, very few. For many nationalists, the turning point in the relationship with the army happened here in Balkan Street in the Divis area of West Belfast in July 1970. Huge numbers of soldiers moved in to search for weapons and much of the surrounding area was sealed off with residents ordered to remain indoors in what became known as the Falls Road Curfew. There was um, jeeps, there was oh, soldiers all over the place. Then they fired the CS gas and then the people all came out and the, the fellas started and the rioting broke out. It was really bad that night and lorries came, cars, took children, all the children were evacuated. It was eerie because there was no children about, there was no dogs barking. If you couldn't open the door, you broke the door down and we went in and we had to search every single house. Um, we searched the backyards, the alleyways. We were over the, all the drains, we were pulling pistols out of drains. There was no cups of tea, there was no chatting, there was no talking. We were the enemy. That's when it all changed. You didn't talk, you didn't speak to them. I think then they weren't allowed to even be served because they used to go into the local shops, maybe for a packet of chewing gum or a bar of chocolate or something like that. The shops weren't allowed to serve them then. No doubt, no doubt left a sour taste here. Perhaps 39 Brigade headquarters Northern Ireland saw this, sought out the falls, and the problem may well have been resolved. Well, clearly it wasn't. Um, it was a turning point, no doubt about it. In Derry, this man, a local football hero and Northern Ireland international, was one of those who initially welcomed the sight of troops on the streets. He's told me I've been arrested under Section 11 of the Special Affairs Act. I have no idea why I've been arrested. None was... This is Tony O'Doherty today. Now, I'm not going to say it was universal because it wasn't, but there was a, a, a sense that, that, that these uh, young men, and they were in those days very young men, these soldiers, had come to do a job. They'd come to protect our community, and that was the initial feeling. So what changed? When you have a lot of young people on the streets, when you have the army patrolling constantly, armed to the teeth, then it is only a matter of time. It is inevitable that something will happen. And, and, and then, of course, in the background of all that is that the Irish psyche the Irish national psyche, which was rapidly becoming Republican in many instances, there, there has never been a, a wholesale or sustained welcome for British troops. When you put all that in the melting pot, it was absolutely inevitable that, 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 that they would basically outstay their welcome. And it was in Derry in January 1972 that any remaining nationalist goodwill towards the army evaporated when soldiers killed 14 people on Bloody Sunday. Those troops who first arrived 
people like Jack Daw and Mike Jelf didn't realise it was just the start of a campaign that would last for 38 years. Vincent Kearney, BBC Newsline.